It's finally here. It's that time of the year. I'm Brandon Phoenix, a.k.a. I Also Hate Pitt, joined by Jeremy J.N. Fiend Phoenix. We are the Raspy Voice Kids. This is the Hale West Virginia podcast, and this is the Why We Hate Tennessee segment. Now, Tennessee fans, you've been running your mouth. You've been running off at the chop so much. But the truth is, what do you have to talk about? You didn't win a single game in conference last year. And yes, you play in the SEC, but you play in the East. And everyone knows about the SEC East. It's garbage. And you were the bottom of the barrel. But you haven't just been bad for one season. In the past five years, you're 34 and 29, while West Virginia is 36 and 28. If we go to the last 10 years, it gets worse because you're 62 and 63, which gives you a losing record, while West Virginia has been 80 and 49. So what do you do then? You'd go to divert the conversation towards history. Well, what good does that do you? Johnny Majors? Who cares about Johnny Majors? Next, you're going to start telling us about rotary phones and how great they were. No one cares, except for you, Tennessee. You're the only ones. And the truth is, if you want to keep going, we can start talking about what has been happening to your program by means of your oldest rival, Alabama. They hold the series record 54 to 38. They've beaten you 11 straight times. It started in 2007, and it hasn't stopped since King Saban got there. Alabama beats you regularly with West Virginia pride. It's been 20 years since you've won any titles, not a single one. And the last one you got, it was the only BCS bowl game you won, while West Virginia won three different BCS bowl games with three different coaches, which tells you it's not the man, it's the brand. While you guys are pretty much less than that. And you know it, if you're being honest. Bama owns you, and you hate it. The third Saturday in October is no longer a joyous occasion. It's filled with dread, it's filled with doom, it's filled with gloom but only for Tennessee. The SEC isn't great. You ride coattails. Alabama's great. They're so great that all of your coaches either start out there or they end up there as Nick Saban's underlings, from Derek Dooley to Lane Kiffin, Jeremy Pruitt to Butch Jones. You couldn't even beat Florida, another one of your nemesis, because of Mountain Greer. And you're going to see him again. Man. I'm telling you, Pusha T told you it's going to be a surgical summer, and that's what it is. Now, I'm not going to hate on the blue tick hound. That's a beautiful dog and extremely smart, and it knows a lot of tricks um, like lay down and roll over, just like your program. <laughs> now, you can, you can talk about the past. You can live there if you want to. You can start every conversation you have with any Mountaineer or everybody and say, well, back in my day, but as long as you keep it there in the past, Because this is not the same Tennessee. This is not your grandfather's Rocky Top. Knoxville has lost its prestige. And the thing is, everybody seems to know that. Everybody's figured it out, except for the people in tacky orange and white. I saw a Facebook post the other day that I thought was funny. They said four things adults don't believe in. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and Tennessee. And people show you that. People show you that over and over. Just listen. I'm going to name names, John Gruden, David Doreen, Matt Campbell, David Cutcliffe, Mike Leach. They all have in common, they all didn't want the Tennessee job. They all told you to your face, you aren't the same. You're not a big boy anymore. Listen, when will you get it? When will it sink in? It should have sank in when you went 4-8 and eight last year. 4-8. and eight. You had one win over a Power 5 team, which was Georgia Tech, and they only went 5-6. and six. You think you're this elite program or in this elite group, And the truth is, you are in an elite group. You're in uh, a group that you probably don't want to be in. One of the few teams that didn't win a conference game. Zero. You're in a group with teams like Ball State, UTEP, Tulsa. That's who you are. And I know know how it goes. Oh, well, this year we have a new coach. Oh, this year Tennessee's back. That's what you say. But when when you learn, it's the same thing over and over and over again. What happened last time you had a new coach? The last few times. 2009, Lane Kiffin comes out in. He's supposed to be the man. Top 10 recruiting class. What happens? He lo- he goes 7-6. and six. He promised he beat Florida, and that didn't happen. The very next year, David Dooley comes in. 2010, uh, number 12 recruiting class. Finishes 6-6. Six and six. Then on December 7th, 2012, here comes Butch Jones. Here's, he's going to bring uh, uh, Tennessee back. GBDO, GBDO. And what <laughs> happened? <laughs> five and seven, your third straight five and seven season. It's the same thing over and over and over again. 
The great poet Sean Carter said, it's a shame when you look into the mirror like there I am and still don't see what you become. Stop and look and realize who you are. Tennessee, you're not a big dog anymore. You are who you are. And it doesn't matter which coach you have because a, a new coach coming to Tennessee is like a player being drafted by the Browns. It doesn't matter. Just like Rocky Top doesn't matter. You guys want to say it's the most recognizable fight song in all of college football. That might be true, but it's probably not. I'm going to tell you it's not. Here's how I know it. While Tennessee and maybe even some in the South love Rocky Top, the world loves Country Roads. And everybody knows about the greatest tradition in all of college football. And that's when we sing after a victory. You guys celebrate. We authenticate our victory with the greatest song that has ever graced college football. And if I you like want to that. argue about whether or not it's fact or fiction, I'm going to hit you with some stats. Get them. Where, Jeremy, can you guess where Rocky Top peaked on the Billboard charts? I, I honestly have no clue. It came out in 1968, and it peaked at number 33. 33 was the best they did. Where would you say John Denver's Country Roads, which came out just three years later, landed on the Billboard charts? Uh, drop it. Drop Number it. two, 31 spots ahead, 31 spots ahead. And while Rocky Top was only on the charts for 10 weeks, Country Roads was there, was there for 23 weeks. And do you know what the number one song on iTunes is right now? The number one song on all of the iTunes charts is? It's uh, Country Roads again. This time the Fallout version. Get better than Cardi B, better than Beyonce, better than uh, Taylor Swift, better than everybody, and certainly better than Rocky Top. People who don't know anything about college football don't know anything about Rocky Top. Everyone knows about Country Roads. It's because it's the greatest. It is the greatest. And the truth is, not only do you have a garbage fight song, you also have a garbage fan base. Jeremy just gave it to you about all the coaches that you didn't have end up coming because they didn't want to be there. You also couldn't get Mike, Mike Gundy. But not only could you not get Mike Gundy, when you went and you finally did hire a coach, Greg Schiano, you ran him out of town before he could even get there. Because of your unreasonable, delusional expectations of who and what you are. And then you used a false premise, a false pretense to get rid of him. The same thing you did to Philip Fulmer, the last man to do anything of, signif of significance for you. Because you have no gratitude. You have no real appreciation or respect. Because you're out of your mind. You think you're something that you're not. The bottom line is you're stuck living in the past. You want to be great so bad. But you're just not. And the worst part is, the saddest part, the hardest part is everyone knows it except for you. Another clear-cut example of the superiority of West Virginia over Tennessee is the fact that the sky is blue and the sun is gold. That tells you where God's heart is with the gold and blue mountaineers. So you better be ready when Dana, Gibby, Spav, David Long, Mount Greer, all show up and invade the Queen City, ready to hunt Old Smokey and the rest of you volunteers. The only time, the only time the sky is orange is when the sun is setting, like it is on your program. Finish, finito. Boom. You guys are done. So stay in your lane. No kiffing.